Um, I think banning it is far too extreme. Um, what should be an enlightened, enlightened approach to regulation is uh, something along the lines of what the Bank of Eng England is doing with financial technology startups, is you create a sandbox where uh, there is uh, light touch uh, or semi-regulation of some of these companies in order for them to innovate and create a better environment for the whole market. The, uh, the banning of ICOs, uh, I think, is, is far too strict. What should be happening is that it should be light touch, semi-regulation, perhaps, new kinds of rules written, um, and, and also creating a, a kind of an innovation area for these companies uh, to, to start innovating. And I think the more enlightened governments are doing that at the moment. Well, if you're thinking about talking about the, the Ethereum, the, the platform of Ethereum, uh, I think it's very interesting that there are a, another number of competitors starting to appear that are trying to do something similar to Ethereum and, and in a different way. But what's interesting about Ethereum is that is actually that they're pivoting around and actually almost staying ahead of the game and uh, being quite clever about uh, how they take the project forward. Um, so at the moment, I think they're, 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 they're the ones to beat. Um, there are a number of others competing with them, but um, they have some very, very smart people, very enlightened people with them um, who are managing to keep the, keep the project um, on its toes and, and responding to the, to the needs of the industry. There's clearly a bubble going on, there's no two ways about it. Um, and I think that uh, there will be a, a number of people who uh, be pretty sad out there. There was a story just the other day about somebody who lost uh, $70,000 in, in one go just, just from a, a, an ICO. Where I think it's heading is that uh, the pre-ICO pre, pre is becoming much, much more important. It also means that traditional investors can, uh, can become involved. It means that uh, you can be much better pr positioned for potential future regulation. Um, and it, it, it means that it's bringing, br bringing the traditional uh, venture capital industry in and along for the ride, um, giving them incentive, uh, incentive to make the whole, whole process much more legitimate and mainstream. There are, there's a, you know, there's a lot of problems with um, fraudulent ICOs going on at the moment, um, and very, very difficult to regulate. Um, uh, you know, the uh, it, it is a problem. It, I mean, it's just a function of the fact that the whole market is basically unregulated at the moment, and it, it's going to happen. It's, it's very old-fashioned. The old-fashioned phrase of buyer beware, basically. Uh, if you can't stare into the whites of the eyes of the people you're investing in, then you may have an issue. Um, uh, I think that there will be some very, very important and significant companies coming out of this whole ICO phase. Um, but at the moment, it's, it's obviously very hard to you know, see the, uh, separate the wheat from the chaff. My impressions uh, after today's uh, blockchain and Bitcoin conference here in Kiev is is that it's a really fantastically run conference. There's, there's a lot of people here. There's clearly enormous amounts of interest in this space. Uh, I think it reflects the fact that Ukraine and Kiev is, is going to be a, a very hot, hot center for this uh, stuff going forward in the future. Um, and it's, it's a great conference. There's a lot of great content, great speakers here. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a lovely city to be in.